It's the last day of the year. Yeah. Go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the t- last top- topical topology talk of this decade, actually, because we're starting a new decade next year and um, tomorrow. And um, what we're going to do is actually, and I'll probably sort of say before, actually, let's say, say hello to Theo first and say... Good morning, Andy. Good How morning. are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. So we've actually had our first gym session today together for the first time in about 18 months, probably. Or Something like that, yes. Something like that, because... Um, because we, we had a lot to cover and we wanted to get this done before the end of the year and because um, and just to give you an update so when our, we do our next podcast we're going to talk about the changes you can make in 2020 and, and things like this and how to approach the year ahead so mm-hmm. we're going to give you a little bit of our our as I would call it expertise in that respect on how we can actually approach the next year because one of the things that I did with my family was um, day before yesterday we spent the best part of about three hours airing out all the frustrations we actually had with each other so we can clear the end of the year with that so when we approach when we approach when we had our, our, our following session yesterday we talked about what our intentions were for next year so we were looking ahead so do you have any rules for that for instance are you non-judgmental or do you just let rip in what sense in your in your, fir- in your um frustration uh, in your airing of your frustrations do you are you allowed to say exactly how you feel and completely let rip or are you meant to be um, purely non-judgmental of each other it, it's, about, it's, it's 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 supposed to be non it's non-judgmental um the thing is, we we approached it with a level of decorum, is the best way I can say it. So it wasn't about attacking each other or everything that we've done wrong. It's, you know, so, for example, one of the things we'd say, actually, I'm not allowed to speak or I'm being interrupted or, or, or whatever it is. Um, we approached it as... And you've got to do it, you've got to do it calmly because it can't be done under... Under heavy emotion, it, you, you do, you've got to do it very. Because under heavy emotion, then you become incapable it, it of taking anything angry in. And, and things like this, and it doesn't. And the thing is, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I mean, we, but the thing is, for us to be able to be open with each other and understanding where each other comes from and how to learn to be more considerate with each other as a family, it was one of those exercises that we do with each other. Um, to air it out so so over the next year I can make a conscious effort to deal with some of the frustrations my family have or they've had with me and how I can actually handle it better um, so it's a very honest conversation and I think that's a problem with many families they're not always honest with each other and they just bottle it up and bury it and then it comes out in anger and it comes out and it, it explodes mm-hmm. so um, so it's something that we are probably going to do more regularly um, as opposed to once a year um, if and when it comes up and we, and we will approach it that way um, because we all have frustrations and we all have emotions and we all have you know and we all deal with those things that we don't say what we should say when we should say it so it's, it's more like a so controlled explosion rather than rather than something far more unpredictable that's correct it, well, it wasn't even ex- it wasn't even an explosion but it was it was it was it was a heavy mm. session it was um, I think it took us the best part of about three hours to do and then we you know and, and that's leaving that in the past and then yesterday we had a session um, and that wasn't as long I mean I think it was probably about an hour where we set our intentions for the next year and I'll, I'll be very clear it wasn't about setting an, uh, so many goals it was like this is what we'd like to achieve by quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four and um, and, the th- and, the th- and the thing is uh, particularly when people make New Year's resolutions and things like this they have this whole big list of things they need to start on January the 1st but the thing is we haven't got the cognitive capabilities to be able to change all these habits at once which means it, and it means that's why a lot of people fail by I think it's probably by the beginning we'll, of February we'll, we'll be talking they? about that next podcast we will be talking about mm. the next podcast but um, yeah so we, we'll, appro- we'll, appro- we'll probably go into greater detail on that then see the advantage of you, of you ha- 
having it out uh, and talk airing your frustrations is that you avoid this any sudden crisis exploding um, now the, the thing is a system in crisis is also it also gives you the greatest opportunity for change but the trouble is with an explosion then sometimes really painful things get said which perhaps might should not have been said because they're not really meant in the first place but when it's uh, done from a place of anger and a place of of contempt then the aim is to harm rather than to be constructive that, that's right and and, and you know and, and, and so sorry, communication I, I, is I, I what's necessary start, isn't it it is, about, it is about communication but it's about having harmony in the household because the thing is you can't move forward as a family unless you've actually got harmony and you're all working together to to a common vision because if your visions aren't aligned then actually you're going off in different directions and it's probably why so many people actually split up over the years um, because their visions change or their values change and things like this. So it's about keeping our values, our visions, our, and our, visions, our vision in line, I suppose. So, it's, so th- being in the Andy household must, m- at times like this, must be like one of those uh, business brainstorming sessions where you're saying, right, let's align us. What's our vision? It, it, it's, there's there's a level of where we want where we want to head together. I mean, the thing is, I mean, one of the things my daughter said, because I want to do something crazy once a year, like whether it's skydiving or or going snorkeling with sharks or or, or, or something like that. And I, I thought, great. And another thing, she said she wanted to do was um, um, and she's actually inquired about it is about helping out in a soup kitchen in Ealing I think it was mm. uh, or one of the soup because she did a charity event um, called Basket Brigade on the 23rd of December which we done for the last 10 years um, unfortunately I was working this year and she uh, said that actually I miss not being able to contribute as much as I used to be able to do well, so we see that's important and in fact that you just raised two very very important issues one she wants to do something crazy and which is variety re- well not only variety, yeah, variety but, right but it is variety but research shows that that people who live a life of vice have less regrets at the end of their life than people who live a life of virtue. Think about that for a second. People who live a life of vice have less regrets at the end of their life rather than people who've lived a life of virtue. So therefore her idea of doing something crazy is absolutely right. The second is her her risk for charity work. And again, Research shows that people who get directly involved in helping others, not just going online to make a donation. But it is also one of the, our big the, human needs as the well. The face though, to face contact is what's important when you're helping someone. And it actually does you, if, if, not, if probably more good than it's doing the other person. Mm. It will make you live longer, it'll make you feel better about yourself, it'll lower your blood pressure, improve your mood. So she's ma- she just mentioned two fundamental things which are important for her state of mind. Of course. I mean, one of the things I've always noticed about Megan when she was... Um, I mean, she's always been highly empathetic, um, even when she was, like, about 15 years old. Well, that's more... Or, or even probably younger than that's that. That's a more female case. brain, isn't it? Female yes. brains are more altruistic. Although she's actually got quite a masculine um, approach to things as well. Uh, or male, you know, yeah. Uh, maybe that comes from my personality. Maybe or I think you just mod- she's modelled on you, hasn't she? In some ways. But she would always go and, you know, she would never give money to the homeless people, but she would always go to McDonald's and go out of her way to go to McDonald's and buy a burger or something and give it to them and things like this. Because I always said, never, don't give them money. Just try and kill them off early. <laughs> yeah. With, 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 with palm fried palm food, palm. yes. Fried food, but, but the thing is, it is a need for survival in that respect. Um, but money, because you don't know, because I mean, there's a lot, because there's a lot more beggars out there on the, on, on, um, on the streets now. Um, and a lot of it is a scam, actually. You, you see them being dropped off. I mean, what, did I saw you? one guy, actually yesterday, I think it was in um, near White City. He was on a crutch and he'd hunched mm. over and his leg looked twisted. But the thing is, his, 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 his um, leg was twisted, but his shoe was straight. It was, it was bizarre and it looked as though it was um, constructed that way. Yes. Um, that he did it on purpose. Well, there's no, there's no doubt that uh, professional beggars do exist. But what what is also true is that the there is a start there's the highest number of homeless people right now in the UK ever recorded. Now homeless doesn't mean necessarily mean on the streets. It means people without a home. So for instance they could be sofa surfing. But there is something like 
240,000 people in the UK who are homeless, which, if you think about it, is staggering in modern times. Yeah, but you've also got to consider, and, and, uh, and this is an article I read um, probably a couple of years ago, actually. So you had a lot of people coming over, particularly from places like Eastern Europe and things like this, or immigrants. And... You know, in some ways, it was always portrayed that the UK was paved in gold. So they all came here for a great opportunity. And all of a sudden, they arrived here, and actually, the same opportunity, they... They couldn't. They couldn't. I would not say integrate, but they 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 never got that level of opportunity, and they ended up on the streets. And so to the point, they can even go back to where they came from. To 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 in, in that respect, so in that respect, so a lot of them ended up on the a lot of them end up on the street. And there's a lot of mental health issues as well with people and things like this. I mean, we've delivered for the homeless. Um, in fact, I think I think about four years ago, I was actually thinking about actually spending a week as a homeless person, just to actually see what the experience was like and things like that and I'm still I, th- I'm, I still might do it it's um, life just got in the way but I still might do it even if it's for a couple of days there was a program wasn't there where people did live um, I, I think it was just for 48 hours as a homeless person something like that um, but, and we all, but, we all, but we also know but, and it's not a real you can put yourself in a real scenario but you know at the end of the day you're going to go and have a mm. hot shower and have a warm room and a warm food at the end of the day so. well indeed but I, I, as far as I remember Lord Blanford was one of those people and uh, he couldn't do it he actually had to stop halfway through he couldn't face it mm. but people adapt and, you know, and, I, and, and I, I feel sorry for them um, and I will, as I said, I will. Uh, I mean, look, there was a guy when I, you know, because um, I smoke occasionally, and um, there was a guy who, on my way to work every day, would be sitting there and he would be picking up cigarette butts. And one time I just went and bought a pouch of tobacco and, uh, and some Rizzlers and a, and, and, and a lighter, and I gave it to him. Um, so he didn't actually have to do that on the street. And he was actually probably more grateful because in some ways it's also currency for them as well and they don't, people don't realise that. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Um, and oh, it's, in, it's interesting, of course, that there are more male homeless. There are more men who are homeless than women who are homeless uh, because clearly uh, women will tend to be the ones who obviously have children with them and that will always take priority, quite rightly so. But also... Women, women are far more skilled socially and therefore they, they will have better social networks and more support, which is another reason why, for instance, uh, at, at the moment, less women commit suicide than men because men become marginalised much more easily. Well, I mean, there's, there's many stats in terms of um, suicide with men. I mean, most men, I think, at the ages between 49 and 55 or, or you know, d- don't quote me on that, but it is, a, it is around about a ballpark figure on that area. Mm. But a lot of it is, is loss, of, loss of family, loneliness, loss of male identity and things like this, which actually leads them to do that. And, of course, the, the, what's interesting is that um, the, the, the more political correctness is being applied and entering full swing... Uh, and the more women are told, well, you, you can behave just like men too, then what's happening is women's health is deteriorating, uh, their heart disease is increasing, and they, they, they're actually succeeding in lowering their average age of survival. Uh, that's an ironic chuckle, by the way. Uh, and their suicide rate is going up. So clearly, women behaving like men is not making them happier. Well, in, in some ways, it's also, you've got to consider this. But the important thing is... People have to behave like themselves. Remember, the the principle here is not equal outcome, it's equal opportunity. Go ahead, Andy. I mean, the thing is, you see, I mean, uh, women are being, you know, told that they should, you know, well, compete with men or, or be equal to men in that respect. But the thing is, in some ways, a woman's a woman's purpose, or many women's purpose, not every woman, uh, but as a majority of women, there is a desire to have children. And and when they don't, and if their purpose is not to be a mother, they lose that. And you know, all of a sudden, they've reached the age of 40, 45, and there's a regret that they they, they never they, they haven't had children. And there's this yearning and this loss. I mean, if I remember Princess Diana. Diana, and I think I probably brought her up a couple of weeks ago, and you saw this very young, 
um, she was quite insecure, quite naive. She became a princess. She struggled in the early stages to establish an identity. But when she really came into her own power was when she actually became a mother. Mm. Because if you actually looked at some of her previous occupations, I think she nannied and she um, and things like that. So she was quite maternal in that way in terms of her personal.